What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. Philosopher Reviews. I, I didn't just make that up, it's a it's a long-standing series that we have here where I review stuff. That's all just a fucking lie. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys about this documentary I saw on Hulu called Fire Fraud. I found it very interesting. I was gonna talk to you guys a little bit about it, tell you what I found fascinating, uh, try to get you to watch it. Um, it's probably gonna have some I don't know if you could spoil things that happen in real life. I mean, you could like Wikipedia this shit. So uh, I guess this is a spoiler warning. But, you know, if you want to watch the documentary and then come back, I understand, you know, no pressure. But I'm trying to sell you on it. So if you've never heard of Fire Festival, a good place to start is it was a fake festival created by an entrepreneur named Billy McFarland. Uh, he was a longtime scam artist. He created a credit card company called Magnesis. Uh, I actually remember seeing advertisements for Magnesis and seeing Billy McFarland advertisements uh, telling me to get this black card to be a part of this, you know, elite millennial society. So I, I had heard of Billy McFarland before, but I, I didn't even connect the two when I heard about Fire Festival because it was just, it, it seemed so long ago. Basically, what Billy McFarlane did was he sold tickets for upwards of thousands to tens of thousands of dollars to a music festival that was supposed to be the most elite Coachella Burning Man experience you could possibly imagine, all right? Like Kanye West was going to perform, you were going to swim with pigs, you were going to be on boats, drinking, with sexy women everywhere. They even advertised that it was going to be on an island that was once owned by Pablo Escobar. And they did all of this without even having an island picked out. They hadn't purchased an island, they hadn't booked any talent, they didn't have any infrastructure, so to speak, at all. Now, the people conducting this interview try to paint Billy McFarland out to be some kind of compulsive liar. Uh, I don't know if I really agree with that assessment. Um, Hulu Shore paid a lot of money to get interview rights with Billy McFarland. I mean, that is one of the selling points that the Netflix version of this documentary does not have. But he still did not answer a lot of questions. On one hand, I feel like calling Billy McFarland a compulsive liar takes away some of his personal responsibility in the matter. Uh, he definitely seems to have thought this out very, very carefully every step along the way, even though he's finding a quick fix to each problem that arises. Uh, it's not something that happens seemingly compulsively. It seems well thought out, very intricate, uh, all, like all small steps in this grand scheme to defraud people of all of their money. This documentary was actually put on my radar from a, uh, a Nerdist News video where they were trying to highlight the differences between the Netflix documentary and the Hulu documentary. And they said that the Hulu documentary uh, is a bit more sensational, and I would definitely agree with that. It's 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 very entertaining the way it's presented. I don't feel like it demonizes Billy McFarland. Uh, for sure, it does hold him accountable, but it doesn't. It, it more so leaves it up to the audience to decide how they want to feel about Billy McFarland. Is this an entrepreneur gone wrong, or is this actually an evil man with some kind of malicious intent? I mean, certainly, as much as it is entertaining, there are tons of workers in the Bahamas that have never been paid. The economy, as bad enough as it already is, there are people now that are suffering so much worse because of it. It seemed like whenever the Hulu interviewers were asking Billy McFarland questions that could possibly incriminate other people, he definitely shied away from that. So he wasn't trying to bring anybody else down with him. I don't know if that necessarily means he's trying to own up to his actions or, or take some sort of responsibility now after the fact, or if legally he's obligated not to say anything on the subject. I mean, I sure wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of Ja Rule. <laughs> and there's no denying that Ja Rule is a huge problem in this because he was the face of the festival. Many people say throughout the documentary that Ja Rule was on the island prior to the festival failing, and everybody knew well ahead of time that this festival was never going to happen, and nobody pulled out. The documentary goes into a lot about the branding behind the festival. Uh, they say that it, it was basically portrayed as Instagram come to life. You see the affluent, you see 
sexy models, drinking, partying, swimming with pigs on boats, uh, the best musical performers in the world performing. People expected Kanye to be there. And when you look at the montage that they created for their commercial, I mean, they, they really did sell it. It's, it's basically what Instagram is. It's just a gilded dream. It's just this image of success that you put off to everybody else when really that's just an image that you're trying to sell. It's not reality anymore. The documentary really likes to touch on the fact that millennials are trying to escape reality or somehow create their own reality. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily incorrect. Uh, I just also don't see the shame in that. I think a lot of millennials actually do recreate their own version of reality and are successful in it. I don't think that we need to sort of play by any particular system anymore. I just find it crazy that so many people dropped so much money on this festival without doing any kind of further research into what they were purchasing. I mean, they point out the fact that if you did a Google map search of where the festival was held, you would see that it's basically a parking lot of a Sandals resort. How do you not even look that up? And a lot of that had to do with the the tactics that the PR campaign that was running it, uh, Jerry Media, were using on Instagram and Twitter to silence people that had any kind of voice against the festival. The posts were being blocked, uh, accounts were being flagged as spam. There's one woman in the documentary that talks about millennials in such a, a detached and apathetic way that this mightier than thou I am so far removed from everything that is millennial but you can't really escape this system that we're in this is this is a, a product of the times this is the 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 climate that is inescapable uh, you're not above it you are you're a part of a, a Hulu documentary that's sensationalizing this that is uh, paying for an interview with this you know this criminal at the end of the day, you can try to distance yourself from it, but you're still incredibly very much a part of it. I can't say that there's not some cringy moments in the documentary, too. I mean, there's a lot of silence. Uh, Billy McFarlane doesn't really answer everything that's put in front of him. There's this great moment where this white guy's like, you need to see this Dave Chappelle skit, which is fucking hilarious because, you know, Dave Chappelle and Kevin Hart are always talking about how much white people love their comedy and like, you're not doing us any favors, bro. You're, you're making us all look bad. <laughs> it's just a white guy going, have you seen this? Have you seen this clip? Cuts to Dave Chappelle dropping some N-bombs talking about Ja Rule. Fucking hilarious. It's a priceless moment. I also thought it was fascinating how they created the fire fraud Twitter account to just emphasize that this thing was not a reality. It was a huge scam. And as many people that were trying to get information from this account, it was totally silenced by the overwhelming PR tactics that the fire festival had on Instagram. Uh, every, every dissonant voice was silenced. You could really, block out the truth with just an orange post just having so many influencers post an orange box on on their twitter feed to to catch you off guard and i i guess it's true i mean millennial advertising when you're scrolling through your feed that fast everything sort of looks the same so an orange box is surely going to stand out but it's isn't it just a little sad that that's what gets our attention I say our attention because I, I don't want to sound like any of the, the people trying to distance themselves from this culture in the documentary. I mean, I'm trying to grow my brand too. I, I'm not opposed to getting follows and likes, but this is not something that most people would ever do. Most people are not trying to promote their brand at the expense of others. I don't think there's anything particularly negative about being a millennial. There's just a lot of stereotypes that happen to be true. I don't think anyone can really look at their marketing materials and not say to themselves, on some level, this looks really fun, I want to be a part of this, even if it's just for a little while, to escape mundane reality. Honestly, this documentary is completely worth it just to hear Ja Rule talk. The man is just mystifying when he, whenever he opens his mouth. I mean, there's a clip of him on the news just like basically tripping over all of his own words. He's like, oh, well, uh, basically... Whenever you marry the affluent with the needy, 
you get the birth child. That's hip hop. It, it's 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 wonderful. It's it's so great. And then they show how after so much effort was made by Ja Rule to try to distance himself from it, he goes on a show and gets drunk and starts bragging about it. Like, yeah, I was basically the head of the festival. You know, I was the image. They have some dialogue that comes from Billy McFarlane's mom, but they, they don't actually have his mother in the documentary. So they have this like digital voice saying it. And it's just really funny. It's a little bit cringy, but I mean, it's really funny. You just get the impression that she's just like so fed up with all this shit that she just doesn't want to do any more appearances. So if you're looking for something interesting to watch this weekend, uh, I definitely recommend it. It's not time wasted. It's uh, an excellent critique on sort of the state of things on the internet, branding in general, what it means to be an influencer. And uh, maybe as a result of this, we can all learn just to be a little less gullible. I think that's the best takeaway, is to learn from our mistakes so that someone like Billy McFarland can not defraud us of all of our money because any of us could be susceptible to something like this this particular scam was so expensive that it was targeting the very wealthy but if tickets to this thing were a couple hundred dollars and it wasn't in the bahamas say for example this was in cali but just it wasn't a real festival like TannerCon or that doomed twitch convention who knows? I mean, any anyone could anyone might just try to pick up a ticket to this thing. You never know.